For the immigrants and migrants of Mexico, was it the American dream or just the dream of many people for a better life? With pastures so beautifully green in America, you don't see the decay on the other side. The Mexican Braceros and Ernesto Galarza's fight for their rights. Ernesto Galarza was known as an activist, a labor organizer, a professor, and the author of several books. He came to America in 1910 with his family in order to flee the Mexican Revolution. Ernesto worked during the summer and after school as a farm laborer, a canner, and at other odd jobs to fund his education. He attended Occidental College as well as Stanford and Columbia University throughout his college career. He graduated with a Master's in Latin American History and Political Science and a Ph.D. in Latin American History. His activism started when he was just a boy of eight years old. He was asked and then elected into a strike committee because he was the only English-speaking Mexican. At the time, he said he knew about 12 words of English, but because he spoke for them, there was a resolution to their problem. Throughout his career, he brought to light the stories of immigrants and migrants brought to the U.S. to work. He helped to advocate for the rights of farm and agricultural workers. He did this through research, activism, teaching, the numerous books he wrote, and helping to form strikes for oppressed workers. He helped to serve the men and families of his country as vice president of the National Farm Union, as well as the secretary of the National Agriculture Union. One of his main fights was to protect the workers from growers who would cast them aside for cheaper illegal immigrants. Many issues facing the farm workers that Galarza advocated for were their susceptibility to exploitation, low wages, as well as substandard living and working conditions due to the oppressive culture they worked for and to the language barriers they faced. Since it was easier and cheaper for the employers to house workers in shoddy living conditions, the workers and their families often suffered. They also had limited access to good food. Some of the men would ship their meals through the mail to farm council and board members to invite them for supper. I don't think any accepted. Galarza states that although they had some small victories and he has seen improvement over the years, many educated men were forced out or poached by the government, ultimately leaving their community behind to suffer. Ernesto worked in the fields for 13 years with the men to organize strikes. He feels the union started to break down in the 50s after the failed de Giorgio strike. The men were inaccessible, afraid to talk. If they were seen talking to Galarza, they could be moved out of state or even deported. For the migrant Braceros, conditions continued to be bad. Transportation to and from work was dangerous from overcrowding and broken vehicles. Men died. There were disabling injuries from floor machinery, industrial poisoning, and some workers were even physically mistreated or abused. Originally, Mexican workers were only supposed to supplement American or domestic workers, but because of low wages they would work for and the working conditions they would put up with, they ended up dominating the fields. The attitudes towards the men were those of second-class non-citizens. The ill effects because of this were numerous, including shortages in work hours, strange deductions from their paychecks, too much insurance money taken out, and not enough coverage from insurance when they needed procedures at the hospital. These men are being sprayed in the face with DDT. Even the worst violations from employers only resulted in their certifications being revoked. The employers would then have to hire domestic workers. For employees, it was jokingly spoken of for as a fate worse than death. Ernesto's research shows that in 51, the pay average was $1,630. And in 59, it was $1,652 still below what the government set after World War II of $2,400 a year for pay. 
The pay was low, and complaining got them nowhere. There was a complete lack of oversight between the two governments. Galarza felt that in regards to getting information, the best way was to challenge those keeping the secrets. The following is part of a verbatim interview given by Mr. Galarza. So we organized with the purpose of taking down a peg or two the power of the Associated Farmers of California, of the banks and insurance companies who have very high investments in agriculture, of other institutions that carry a role in the background as investors and as manipulators of wealth. Step by step in a series of strikes, we challenged that power. We named institutions. We named persons. We named places. Through the years, the picture unfolded. But to the degree that we did define the opposition, the opposition grew in strength and determination to destroy the Union, and it did destroy the Union. In a smaller excerpt, Galarza stated, The agencies of state and federal power were conniving, collaborating, and conspiring with the economic power structure to destroy that Union, and they did. He later goes on to say, I think that any challenge to power in these democratic United States is going to, as of now, run into the same kind of difficulties. With deeper respect to Ernesto Galarza's life work and how he depicted the struggle of the Mexican workers and their successes, immigrants and migrants unite. We are all in this together. And it leaves me wondering, with the Mexican economy so heavily dependent on U.S. favors, what the future holds for the people of Mexico.